You are a very smart dog. That's right. Oh, Stoney will do it with you. Good boy. Can you wait right there? Oh, wait. Oh, come over to this edge. Good, stay. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, stay up there. Stay. Good job. Those old leaves make that boulder very slippery, don't they? It's important, guys. You know, you think about getting the dog to climb on the rock here, okay? But as the seasons change, see this leaf? This leaf? You wouldn't believe how slippery these leaves make things. So the dog gets up here, and they're used to gripping this nice, hard rock surface. And look, he's, I mean, he literally can do just like a goat. Put some of those leaves up there, bam, falls right off. So you have to be super careful when you're out doing this, guys. It takes years of experience to learn how to do this safely, to be honest with you. So if you don't have years of experience, then double and triple check what you're working on. And it's a pretty good idea to go ahead, when you're up on an obstacle like this, get up here and test it out yourself. You know, put your feet on it, move your feet around, touch it with your hands. Try to really get an idea of what you're asking the puppy to do. I see that all the time where people, they don't realize how hard something is because, you know, they just, they just expect the dog to be able to do it. You know, well, this stuff, it's not normal for a dog, at least not a suburban dog. Now, maybe old country dog, a farm dog, yeah. Very nice. Okay, all right, homie. Get down off there, easy. Very nice. Let's go get some. Oh, you don't need to get back up there. <laughs> Come on. We've got more adventuring to do down the hey creek. Guys, back to what we were talking about, about physical socialization. You know, when people are raising puppies, they start thinking about physical socialization. And, you know, uh, in a regular suburban environment, the puppy's just not exposed to very much in the way of extremes. No extreme temperatures, no extreme textures, no extreme uh, noises or sights, okay? And so if you're trying to, you know, raise a dog that's going to do search and rescue later, it's very important during the imprinting period to physically socialize the dog to as much as possible. And uh, I'm just going to use this little area we're in right now to show you what I mean. Now, I have Chacos on in uh, this particular video clip, and I'm going to take them off just to show you. You saw in that other video clip how when I was trying to walk around the water, I was having to tenderfoot it. Those are things that you just don't think about when you're training your puppy. So if you want to know what your puppy's going through, guys, then take your shoes off too, because the puppy, they don't have any shoes on, right? So as soon as I take those, those shoes off, I start getting a lot more stimulation, okay? I'm sitting here and I'm enjoying nature or whatever, having a good time with this little dog. But, you know, when you're wearing shoes, there's an insulative layer between the earth and your brain, right? So what we're trying to do with a puppy is to get that stimulation going from their toes all the way up to their nose, okay? The more different environments that you expose the dog to, the better those neural pathways are gonna be, the better the physical development and the mental development are gonna mash, okay? And that's what's generally referred to as proprioception. Now, so when I took my shoes off, okay, these, 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 um, this is what I start feeling right off the bat. I've got some loose, sandy, kind of muddy uh, material under my feet. I've got some sharp twigs. I've got some slippery leaves. See, so I'm already much more in tune with this dog's experience. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and help him come down this uh, bank. Good boy. Now, as I come down this bank, I notice, look, at, look how my foot slides, and I've got to be very careful here. So this helps me have empathy for my dog's situation. Too often as dog trainers, we kind of expect dogs to perform at a high level when we change environments without properly acclimating them to those new environments or really understanding, you know, the dog's perception of how challenging something can be. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Oh, very nice. So I talk to him. Now, as I start to come down through here, there's some, oh, just deep mud. Look here, look, come here, look at my foot. You see what I'm saying? Bring that over here, cameraman. Watch my foot sink down in this mud. Gee whiz. Look at this, watch. That's hard, but this is soft mud, right? So I'm gonna try to get this dog to come up, come over here, come through this little muddy part here. Whoa, look at that. That's so weird feeling. 
okay? I need to make sure that this dog later on in life, he's not going to run up on a little patch of mud and go, oh my gosh, I've never felt that before. What's going on? Good boy. Of course, I'm going to bring him across that mud, and he's going to get across that mud, and he's going to get right to, see, look, see, look right there, his, his feet. He'll be hard to catch on camera, but when he, his foot hit this mud, his foot spreads out like that, okay? Dogs have to learn how to use their feet, guys. They're not just born knowing magically how to use their feet, see? So this is giving him information from his nose all the way up through his body down to his, his from his toes all the way up through his body to his nose, okay? There's a lot of information traveling there, okay? I'm going to bring him across here. Come on. Oh, good boy. Now we get up in here. We've got a mixture of leaves that are slippery and rocks and gravel. But it's not too awfully bad. I'm walking around barefoot. Look at that. Now I am from Kentucky, guys, but most of the time I wear shoes, okay? But you got to be willing to get your feet muddy if you're going to do a good job with your dog training. All right. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to start to move through this little bit of a creek here. Now you'll notice in this creek we have some fast moving water and we have some kind of static water. The static water is deeper of course, okay? So as I go to moving my way across here, I could have trouble with this. See how this water's going a little faster here? Well of course this can worry a little dog. So I'm going to get it right in here with him. I'm not going to expect him to do anything that I won't do with him. Good boy. Walk down through here. Come on, come on. Very nice. Now I'm going to move over here and get into this more static water. Now what I notice, since I don't have my shoes on, guys, is that, again, I'm much more in touch with what the dog's feeling. So there's a, quite a bit of sensation in that water that's moving quickly, and we're on some nice smooth rocks. As I move over here to this uh, more, more, more still water, the, the bottom changes to more silt and sand, so the dog might have a different reaction to this. Luckily, this dog's got a pretty solid temperament, so I don't anticipate any trouble. Now he's going to actually have to swim to get across that. There you go. Very nice. Now, when I introduced that concept of swimming to him, wasn't much. Wasn't much at all. Just a little bit. Just to let him know if he starts floating. Come on, buddy. You can do it. If he starts floating, oh, all he's got to do is keep paddling, and he'll come out on the other side in perfect shape. Very nice. Oh, now look what we found. We found no log here. Good. Can you get up on this old log? Very good. Sometimes you got to help them just a little bit, not too much. Don't do it for them. But you can help them. Good. Now I'm going to tell him, wait. See if I can hold him on that. As he gets older, it's going to be very, very important that I can get him to take a posture or get a position and maintain that position and only move when I tell him to move. Very nice. Now let's see if I can get him to turn around on here. Good boy. Now this log's a little narrow so I'm gonna help him. Okay and there's gonna be times when this dog's a big dog and he's gonna have to be very cooperative if I want to be able to help him. Easy. Very nice. Oh, come on off there. Good boy. Now we're going to go back on these rocks, and these rocks are killing my feet, so again, I have empathy for the dog's position that these rocks might not be the most fun things to work on. Now again, look here. Now see, right here, look at that. You can probably hear that water. Quite a different speed. Whoa! I'm going to come off of there. Now we're going to have to go through a little part where the dog's swimming. Oh, come on, Holmes. You can do it. Oh, good boy. Very good. Yes, now we got a silty bottom. Okay. We've got a big old rock here. Woo, that rock's kind of slippery. Whoa. When I say kind of slippery, I mean really slippery. Good. Good job, Holmes. Now, I'm going to have to get down on all fours like I'm a dog so I don't uh, fall in here and mess up my microphone. Good boy. Now we're back to a silty bottom. Good dog. And Holmes is like, hey, I think I'm just going to chill out on this rock up here. Come on, Holmes. You can do it, buddy. 
Sometimes they'll be a little bit hesitant. Oh, that's fine. Good boy. Very nice. Good dog. Now let's go through here. Whoa, what all kinds of rocks do we have here, Holmes? Come on, buddy. Oh. Very nice. Good dog. Good dog. Oh, I got a little moss over here on this boulder. Slipping and sliding. Good. Getting back to all fours. Very nice. Oh, Holmes, that's a long way up, buddy. Why are you going the long way? Come on, you can do it. Very nice. Good boy. Good dog. Very nice. Okay, now maybe we're going to take this high road and go up over these uh, this up over these rocks. Oh, and onto this bank. And of course, wouldn't you know? The first thing I run into is old sticker bush. Gosh dang it. Oh, come on. Very nice, Holmes. Very careful here. Very careful. Whoa. Very careful. Good job. Very nice, Holmes. Oh, are you getting up there to see what's going on? Sorry I stepped on your toe. Oh. Good dog. Come on, come on. Oh, watch that sticker bush. Very nice, Holmes. Let's find us a way through here. Let's go a little higher, Holmes. Get away from some of those rocks. Very good. All right. Now we're getting it. Oh, man. You know, I like you, Holmes. I like having empathy with you and everything, but I kind of wish I wouldn't have taken off my chuckles. Good. Good dog. Good boy. All right. Now we've got some big boulders to walk across. All right. And then I think that this is shallow enough so that we can get a little walking and a little swimming and not oh, fall in here and mess up my microphone. Let's see. Oh, yep, we can do it. We can do it, Holmes. Oh, don't whine. Don't be a whiner. Very nice. Oh, very nice. Very nice. If you get a little whining out of them, guys, that's okay. Listen, it's like a kid, you know, that you take and they want to jump off the high dive with their friends, but they can be a little bit afraid. Don't worry about it too much. Main thing is don't fall and break your own leg <laughs> before your dog is a... Uh, grown up, because there'll be nobody to search and rescue you. Oh my gosh. Oh, Holmes. Gonna have to go to the podiatrist. Oh my gosh, what do we have here, Holmes? Very nice. Oh. Oh, look at what I found. I have found the log pile to end all log piles. This is awesome. Now, when I see a log pile like this, guys, obviously I could pick Holmes up and start him right here, and that's a good skill for him to learn. It's good for him to learn how to uh, let me manipulate him physically, okay? But the reality is, if I, if whenever I have the opportunity to make him work for something, I'd rather make him work for it and him do it himself. So I brought him down there and let him work for it all by himself. Gives the dog, you know, just like a kid, much more of a sense of accomplishment. Very nice. Very nice. Whoa. Don't get too excited and leave me, Holmes. Oh, let me here. Let me come down this way. Oh, hey. Where are you going? Come back, Holmes. <laughs> Dude, you went completely the wrong way. Go back over there. Oh, are you coming out the underneath side? <laughs> You're crazy. You are a crazy dog. You are a crazy dog, Holmes. Good. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap this part of the, the video up. 
before my cameraman falls out here and we have to call in the search and rescue team or I fall out here and uh, Holmes has to drag me out. You see what he's done here, he's happy, he's confident, he's outgoing, he's had a lot of experience both mentally and physically and I've taken my shoes off so I could share in this experience with him guys. You really want to get out and share the experience with your dog. If you want to be a good trainer, Listen, I, you know, people ask me this all the time about being a good dog trainer and what technique is the important technique and all that stuff. Well, let me tell you guys, what's important is that you and this dog have a relationship where you have kind of a, a mutual understanding of what's expected and not only what's expected, but why what's expected should be done, right? So I want Holmes, as soon as we pull up somewhere, to look at me and go, hey, Stoney, let's get out, let's have an adventure, because I know if I work with you and if I follow your direction, it's gonna be an awesome day, and it's gonna be an experience that I'll remember and cherish my whole life, and I feel the same way uh, about working with Holmes, okay? So guys, get out there and focus on your relationship with your dog, get out and live the experience, and uh, take off your clothes. Take off your shoes, get out in nature, get naked if you need to, guys, roll around, see what it feels like, because your dog's naked, right? Okay, so the more naked you get, the more naked the dog gets, the happier everybody is. So we're doing a good job with our physical socialization. We're doing a good job with teaching a basic vocabulary. We've got the dog riding on the ATVs. Everything's going perfectly smoothly. Now it's time to introduce the concept of uh, searching and rescuing, right? And what is that really? Hey dog, we're gonna go find somebody and they're not gonna be very easy to find so we're gonna have to work hard, All right. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. I'm gonna run across this creek and I'm gonna kinda hide and I'm gonna give the dog some encouragement to come find me and I'm not gonna make it so hard that he can't find me, but I'm not gonna make it so easy that it's easy for him to find me. Remember, the concept of all our training programs are, are incremental progress. Every day we get up and we try to challenge our puppy so the puppy has to work just a little bit harder than it had to work the day before. Okay, so I'm fixing to go out through this creek and I'm gonna bury myself up over here in a little swag in the hill and uh, I'm gonna whistle a little bit and call the dog as I go and I'm gonna try to hide and let him come find me. If he doesn't come find me right off the bat, then I'm gonna give him a little bit more help. So you might hear me whistle a little bit every so often. I'll whistle and let him come find me. And uh, if I have to, I'll even peek myself out around that bank over there. But ideally, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna take off running. George is gonna restrain the puppy. I'm gonna hide. George is gonna give me about a 20 count. Then he's gonna let the puppy go and the puppy's gonna come find me. All right, so wish me luck. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Good dog. Good dog. Oh, good boy. Where am I going, Holmes? Are you going to be able to find me? Are you going to be able to come search and rescue me, buddy? Oh, I I might really need it if I fall on one of these rocks over here. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Dang. It's a lot easier when I was 25. Good. Holmes! Come on, Holmes! Come on! Now, bury myself up over here under this rock. Nerd Actual, release the dog, release the dog. Holmes has went a little too far. He lost me, he got confused. I'm behind one rock and he went over and uh, thought I was Film behind the crew other was panicked because Holmes started running off and they were afraid they were never gonna get him back. So I'm gonna give Holmes just a little bit of, uh, <laughs> little bit of encouragement. <laughs> Holmes, come on Holmes, come find me buddy. Now I shouldn't have buried myself up under this rock quite so well. Oh, he's getting frustrated. Here he comes. Holmes, come on, Holmes! Holmes! <laughs> come on, Holmes! What makes them frustrated is when they can't see you. Oh. 
Holmes, come find me. Oh my gosh! Oh, Holmes found me! Oh, Holmes found me! Oh, he's such a good boy! Oh, he's got me wet! Oh, he's got me with a whip! Oh, he's going to get you! Oh my gosh, Holmes, are you excited? Oh, 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 oh yes, you found me! You are a good boy! Oh! Now, as this dog gets older, guys, of course, we're not going to let him quite get so excited because you can imagine just being some poor person stranded and the dog comes and loves you, to, you know, finishes you off, loves you to death. But uh, for right now, all I really need is for Holmes to be super excited about finding me. Oh! And I'll be super excited about being found. Oh, you're a good boy, Holmes. You're a good boy. Oh, my gosh, you're a good boy. All right, let's get another repetition with my man Holmes. I'm going to run up here. I'm going to get him excited. Oh, good boy, Holmes. We are going to play some hide and seek. Oh, we're going to play some hide and seek. And then I'm going to come across all oh, this giant waterway. Oh, so Holmes sees me going across here. Right, lead by example, guys. Got to get in here and get your feet wet. Now, I am cheating a little bit. I put my chocos back on because I didn't want to fall and break my leg. Good. So here I go, roaming my way up through this wilderness talking to the dog ever so often, letting him know that he's supposed to be coming to find me. Come on, Holmes. Come on, buddy. Now, George is restraining him, and what that does, that makes him a little frustrated, and that makes him really want to come find me, because all the things in life that you really want to have are the things that are denied to you, the things you can't have. So as I call Holmes and talk to him, good boy, Holmes, good boy, then what he says, he's like, George, George, let me go. I want to go. I want to go find Stoney. I want to go do what Stoney's doing, okay? But what Stoney's doing is getting steadily farther and farther away. And so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hide. Now, I'm going to hide in an area where I've already socialized homes to. So he's got his footfalls down. He's got a few different paths that he knows to come and uh, make his way around these obstacles, this water, the fast-moving water, the slippery leaves, the logs, the boulders, okay? So I'm going to get over here, I'm going to crawl over this log, and then I'm going to hide. I'm going to give it just a minute, not too long, but not too short, guys, because what I'm trying to do every day is challenge Holmes, okay? I don't want to make it easy for him, okay, but I don't want to make it too hard for him, and that right there is what the art of dog training is all about. So I'm going to get down here, oh, I'm going to hide, then I'm going to signal on my trusty Motorola walkie-talkie for George to let Holmes go. Nerd Actual, this is little daddy, send the dog. Now I use the, the walkie talkies, they can let me know if the dog's having a hard time finding me. And I can give him a little bit more information. I can whistle for him or I can rustle some rocks together or uh, I can kind of, you know, pop my head up a little bit so he sees the motion of his senses, his sight, his ears. Oh, there he comes. I hear him, he's over here searching for me now. Oh, is he gonna be able to find me? He took the hardest route. You know, and this is something that they'll gain experience with. They'll be able to look and see, you know, what an easy, what an easy route is. I think he's found a hard route. Oh, there he comes over the log. Oh my gosh! Oh, look who found me, it's my Labragoat. It's my Labragoat. Oh my gosh, that was such a good boy. You rescued me. Oh, that boy rescued me. Oh, he's my favorite. He's my favorite dog. I love him. Oh my gosh, he's such a good rescue, rescue puppy. Oh, good boy. Oh, oh, and my man Holmes has rescued me again today. So, oh, I'm going to take him home and buy him a steak dinner. Oh, he's a good boy, Holmes. Good boy. All right. All right, guys, see you next time. All right, so we've found a nice little trail down here in the gorge, and I'm going to go hide, and Holmes is going to find me. Now, hopefully, the cameraman's going to be able to get close enough behind Holmes so that you can see Holmes' decision-making process and how he's going to approach finding me. There's multiple factors at play here. Part of it's just the environment. Uh, after a little bit of experience, Holmes has started to figure out that people will take the path of least resistance. Right? It didn't take him but a few times to realize that if Eli or one of my children went and hid, that probably the environment was going to funnel those children someplace where you know it was going to be easy to find them. You know? So always think about that. When you're looking for something, generally speaking, if a person gets lost uh, or if a person finds themselves in a you know, harsh physical environment, they're going to take the path of least resistance. Now the second thing that's going to happen is Holmes is going to be smelling 
and it's going to be looking and it's going to be listening. Now primarily what dogs are doing is they're smelling, but now when you're in a gorge like this, the air currents are kind of going crazy and it's hard to you know, necessarily understand directionality from you know, with scent, right? So you might see Holmes look down on the ground, you might see him smell, you might see him you know, raise his head up and look, and you might see him perk his ears up and listen. Okay, because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to not exactly train Holmes to be a full-fledged search and rescue dog. We're just trying to get him in the habit of using all his senses to find a person. And then later on in life, regardless of what you know, direction his owner goes with as far as his uh, the utilitarian aspects of his training, whether he's going to be a dog that's dedicated to doing outdoor stuff like down here in the gorge or he's going to be doing rubble piles, he's going to be doing caves, he's going to be doing underwater stuff like cadaver work. I, I don't know exactly what the owner's going to do. I just know I've been hired to give him a good foundation. And so that foundation revolves basically around physical socialization and teaching home, homes how to use all of his senses where, when it comes to problem solving. So hopefully we'll be able to get that on camera for you. So I ran off down that trail and buried myself up in some leaves behind the old tree. Then I pulled a smaller tree down in front of me so I'd be hard to see. Now you might catch a glimpse of me in this video, but uh, I'm pretty sure that if you were on that trail, I could ambush you with very little trouble and you wouldn't see it coming. Then we stuck a long line on home so we could keep him in the frame of the camera. You know, he has a tendency to run a little bit faster than what my wife can keep up with, so we had to slow him down a bit. Now what you'll notice is that he'll run a little ways and then he'll stop and look up. And uh, that's because he's, you know, he's kind of looking for me using all his different senses. He can smell me. He knows I've been down this area. And uh, the problem is, is that scent gets really dispersed. Because I walked out here in this brush a little bit here. And so there's scent all over that area. And, you know, he'd been looking for me before. And when he would get lost, I'd give him a little help. And so he knows to listen. And he knows to look because he had seen me before. He had spotted me with his vision before. But he'd also smelled me before. Right. So, uh, you know, once he got the hang of what was going on, he got back on the tra trail and he found me fairly quickly. I'll let the audio take over from there. Oh, oh my gosh. Mr. Always found me. Oh, he found me. I was buried in leaves. Oh, I was buried in leaves. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I was going to die in the Red River Gorge, but Holmes found me. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Holmes, you're so happy to find Tony. Oh, you do have to be so Oh, why you hit my mom?